It's soon going to be Christmas, and obviously a lot of people think about it as a religious event. Children just think about it as toys, but we all know what it's really about, don't we? So yes, it is officially the silly season. We're into December. No one is starting any big DIY jobs, including myself, leaving all of that until after Christmas. However, when I put the Christmas decorations up with my wife, she suggested we make an area in the utility room to set up drinks for friends and family as they come round. So I sort of got to thinking that maybe we'd set up a board and we'd put a bit of a sign saying bar, do some optics or whatever. And then looking at the corner of my utility room, that led to me thinking of putting up two boards, which will give me extra room. However, there is a little bit of a box out where the central heating pipes go from the ground floor to the first floor. So I've got another couple of strips of melamine that I thought I could cut down to get around that box out, maybe with some hinges. So what I'm thinking is like a pop-up bar that I can use over Christmas just for a bit of fun. And then something that I can sort of close up and store with the Christmas decorations and then open again next Christmas or if I have a party at some point. I don't really want this in place all year, but it's just a bit of fun over Christmas. Now I want it to be as cheap as possible and I've had this melamine in my store for some time. It's not in a great condition. I picked it up for free at my local DIY shop. So I think it's sort of suitable time to use it. Obviously you can use ply or MDF or anything like that, just paint it white. I've also got a baton here that I've had that I bought for a job that I never used. Um, so I can paint that white as well to match this. The only thing I have had to buy is some hinges. So I just picked up some very cheap steel hinges, but I'm sure they'll do. So I need to cut these boards down so they're the same height and the right width for my kitchen. And just to match, I need to paint this batten so it matches with the white. So I might as well do that first, so at least it's drying. <laughs> Sometimes it's good to use bits of wood that you just can't see any immediate use for. And especially for a novelty project like this, which is really just a bit of fun. But it's Christmas, so why not? As I'm cutting melamine today, it's a good opportunity for me to try a way of cutting that many people have suggested. So firstly, I'm gonna try a very shallow cut. I've set the depth to one millimeter here, and that's just to cleanly cut the very top surface. I follow this by a full depth 20 millimeter cut that will go all the way through. I've never been able to try this before because I've always used standard circular saws. So I'm interested to see if this does make any difference. That is a really nice cut. Definitely the way to do that. I cut two sheets the same size using this method and changing the depth between each cut, which doesn't take long. I'm thinking here to make a shallow box, fixing the batten around three sides so it can close on each other, a bit like a briefcase. So in preparation to fixing the batten, I countersink some holes around the perimeter so I can fix the batten from the back. With the primer dry, I can now top coat the batten. Mm. 
With the top coat dry, I can cut it to length by offering it up, marking and cutting, just using simple butt joints. So now the batten is painted, it's not got its final coat and there's still a couple of marks, but at least it's sort of 90% of the way there. I've cut it up to make the perimeter of this case and all I've done is some butt joints on each corner. I haven't measured anything, I've just offered it up, marked it and cut it. So now I really want to screw it from the underside, but obviously I want to get it right and to do that I really need to sort of stick it on. So I'm going to be using some thick uh, super glue here just to get it to stick temporarily while I can then sort of clamp it and then turn it around and screw it from the other side. Now you'll notice I'm not using any activator and I really don't feel you need to use activator every time you use super glue for a couple of reasons. Firstly, we all spent many years using super glue before someone came up with activator and we all saw it on YouTube. And secondly, and far more importantly, I do need a bit of the old slippy slidey adjuster bolt rather than the immediate grab fixy wrong, if you know what I mean. There you go, perfect. Deep joy. You can obviously clamp the batten to the melamine without using the super glue, but if you do, it just means it's easier to place the clamps after a few minutes without the whole thing moving around everywhere. With the box built, I want to make a sign to make it clear what this whole thing is. So as usual, I print out and glue letters to a bit of MDF. And today, to make this sign, I've got a new toy to help me, which is a scroll saw. I've just bought this online for £120, which will help me carrying out those really tight radius cuts that I struggle with at the moment on the bandsaw. It's essentially a really fast moving thin blade that just goes up and down, but when it's cutting you can rotate it almost without moving forward, depending on the type of blade you use. This one has an adjustable bed, an air blower that clears the sawdust so you can actually see what you're doing, and a light. And I must say, it makes cutting letters with tight radiuses really easy. And if you get it right, it even has an automatic letter ejection system. With the letters cut, I can sand off the paper from the front and they're ready for painting. Thank you. 
Once the paint has dried, I use some masking tape to help line up the sign and glue them on. And then onto the fun part of putting everything together. To enable me to also display some magnetic bottle openers, I cut to size a piece of galvanised steel that I've had in the workshop for a couple of years now. And no bar would be complete without some shot glasses. So I find a suitable size bit to make a hole for them and drill some holes to make a shelf for them to hang in. And by chamfering just a little bit from the bottom rear section, the shelf also helps secure the steel sheet in place. So although I made it transportable, I wouldn't want to carry this too far, but it's portable enough for me to get up in the loft in January. And the great thing about projects like this is that you can put your own touches to it and add the things that are important to you and your family. It's going to be interesting to see over Christmas how much whiskey and vodka is drunk, just because it's so available and so easy just to get a shot whenever you want. And I've got a feeling my children are going to use them regularly. But when I say children, I mean early 20s. So all in all, I'm really happy with it. It's worked out as I thought, and it folds as I thought. And at the end of the day, it's just a bit of fun over Christmas. So definitely worth using materials that are a little bit rough and ready that you're probably not going to do anything else with. I hope you've enjoyed this video and it's given you some ideas on what you can do over the festive period if you've got friends or family coming around. Remember, Patreon, subscribe, all of that sort of stuff, and I will see you next time.